Negotiations by Rated Star Pony, read by Deathlight. I checked my papers for what had been the 16th time. Usually Spike was here to help keep my files organized, but I needed him back at Equestria to keep order. He had grown up so much since I hatched him from his egg, and the war only made him mature faster than I would have liked. If the worst was to come for this meeting, well, I trust him to carry out the backup plans I prepared just in case. Princess, you don't have to go alone. So one of my guards, with a look of fear in his eyes. Whether it was for my safety, or because we were surrounded by a bunch of soldiers who could, and more than likely, want to kill us in seconds. Before I could answer, a voice on one of the communication speakers said, Princess Twilight, you may proceed to negotiation table alpha. I sucked in a deep breath before calmly following our guides down another corridor. It was time to see if a quest would survive or be destroyed, and it all rested on my shoulders. No pressure, huh? I could remember the first time I ever had a representative question with another race. It was almost a disaster. The Yaks were this close to declaring war on us, and if it wasn't for Pinky, I might have caused the first war in over 500 years on equestrian soil. But nothing happened then. We managed to preserve our harmony and peace. I dealt with other negotiations over time, such as two warring families, griffins, and even a dragon clan or two. Now, however, I was going to be negotiating with a race that was even more deadly than all those we left behind in our dimension. This was a race I had known for only 15 years. Sometimes they're brilliant, other times they're ruthless, and their seemingly erratic behavior scared me. Never before had I, or any question for that matter, ever dealt with such a strange race as humanity at the negotiating table. I was escorted by my own personal guards along with those of the UN. I could feel their hatred even without staring at them, and I knew that some of them wanted nothing more than to shoot us and be done with it. If this was the attitude of a few soldiers in this underground bunker, I feared what the rest of the world would be like. According to my reports, there were a few countries that didn't hate us, like North America and a few European countries. Other places, like what remained of the areas once known as the Middle East, Africa, South America, and such, wanted nothing more than for us to be wiped out. I surrendered humanity, likely saved us being exterminated via the nuclear missiles, like, like the Crystal Empire. No, I wouldn't cry now. I can't cry for the thousands if not hundreds of thousands dead. I can't cry for Cadence or my niece, not now at least. I had cried for Shining Armor during the invasion of New York City. I had cried for Pinky, Rarity, the Crusaders, all the ponies that died the bombing of Ponyville, my parents in the Siege of Canterlot, Princess Luna in the Battle of Jerusalem. I lost so much. I had so much to cry for, but I can't afford to now. I had to be as strong as I could for my little ponies. The fate of our nation, my people, and the comatose Princess Celestia, who was kept secret below Canterlot, was in my hooves. And I was all alone. That was the request, myself, and only myself. The quarters were black, almost lifeless if it wasn't for the small light bulbs they had. We passed an armed security every two minutes, their guns ready every time. I hadn't thought such horrible weapons could be made. I researched their bloody history and figured that alone was enough for us to change their ways. Make them just like us and introduce them to the concept of friendship and harmony. A good portion of them accepted it, becoming the new foals just like we had hoped. What we didn't expect was such resistance and eventual distrust. That was why Princess Celestia said we had no choice but to force them. If they cannot accept our harmony by their own free will, and be taught a different path from their own destructive ways, then we had to convert them to ours to save them. It seemed so simple back then, especially with the barrier protecting us from harm and slowly taking over the earth. But it was gone. Now we were the losers, and they were the winners. We were just trying to save them, but I guess they didn't want to be saved. Finally, we made it to a steel door where one of our human escorts wiped a card and typed in a code into a computer. Human technology was always so amazing to see, even now. To think, an entire race did this without magic. It made me wonder what would happen if magic and technology was combined. It was a different mindset than Princess Celestia. She hated their technology. 
She told me that their scientific advancements was always for the name of preserving humanity. Yet everything they created, they also used to destroy or abuse. They destroyed their environment, and they were killing each other by the millions, sometimes billions each century. She believed they advanced too fast, made too much, and tried to become something more than they should. I didn't fully agree with this, but I took it to heart nonetheless. I obeyed her, because it seemed she was right. Technology was dangerous. The war only proved that. The door opened, and the guard nodded me to enter. I did my best to look as calm as possible, but on the inside I was ready to teleport. Well, the chances are, I wouldn't be able to. No doubt that Thurman generators were stationed everywhere, and working at full power. Thurman generators, or anti-magic generators as they were sometimes called, were the key weapon that brought about our defeat midway through the war. They were what brought down the barrier, allowed Princess Luna to be defeated so easily ultimately forced us to surrender as our forces were slaughtered and helped cause Princess Celestia to fall into a coma after nearly using all of her magic to protect us. It sounded so wrong to me to think that humans can make something so powerful, render our greatest strength to nothing so quickly. i have been under them before and it felt wrong, like a part of my soul was being sucked away. The doors closed behind me and I was left alone with a single human at the table. A set of notes were in front of him. I knew this human very well. His name was Anthony Doyle, a member of the UN's peacekeeping department. And he was perhaps one of the few high-ranking politicians who were willing to give us a second chance. Princess Twilight Sparkle. Mr. Doyle. I sat down and for a while neither of us spoke. Mr. Doyle then sighed and leaned back in his chair. For the record, nobody can hear us inside of here. There are no mics, recordings, or anything of the sort. Nobody will attack, hurt, or kill you while you are a guest. And trust me, there are a good number of us humans who want you dead. I didn't say anything, but he continued. The reason I am here is because, despite your attempts to completely exterminate my race, there are some of us who don't want to utterly destroy your kind. As you know, some ponies decided to decide with us during the war, and if not for their help, we might not have won. You know liar heartstrings, I presume? My heart flickered a bit out of anger. Liar heartstrings. Do you think I was even friends with that traitor? She and her followers decided to side with humanity and sold us all out. She believed that we were in the wrong, and they were right. Ponies I knew and trusted joined her. Flash Sentry, Moon Dancer, Carrot Top, Derby Hooves, Brayburn, and even Fluttershy. My own best friend Fluttershy believed what we were doing was wrong. That we had no right to force them into becoming something else. It was against nature, she claimed. Human nature is what made them destroy themselves in the first place. And even if they did survive, it would have been their third world war. They would have continued this over and over again. We were trying to stop it, we were trying to help them, we were trying to save them! But no, she didn't listen, none of them did. And now we're paying the price for doing the right thing. What made it worse was that Discord joined her. His loyalty was to her first and foremost, and with him helping humanity, despite his magic being limited on their side of the world, we had even tougher opponents than before. All because Lyra Heartstrings couldn't keep her damn monkey-loving mouth shut. I know her, yes. I said it in a tone that made it clear I didn't want to talk about it. It was because of her, her ponies, and some humans that didn't want to commit genocide like you tried to do that wanted to make sure that we have a peaceful coexistence. Mr. Doyle, we weren't trying to commit genocide. We were trying to save you all. I said, trying to stay true to my mentor's beliefs. Before we came here, you were ready to go into World War III. Your resources were depleted, poverty and corruption was at an all-time high, and you were killing each other over things such as which god to worship. We offered you a chance to become something greater, something that would give you friendship and harmony. A good proportion of your people accepted it. And other mindless drones who preach about the glory of Celestia like some brainwashed Jehovah's Witness. Finished Doyle, shaking his head. Tell me, Twilight Sparkle, have you met the new fools? Seen them, heard them, talked with them. 
As they invented a part of the potion that turned my people into them, you must have seen the results. I winced. In truth, I had. And I didn't like what I saw. The potion was to make them more pony-like. Only with restrictions on their sinful natures. Hindering such emotions such as greed, lust, and hate. Yet, something went wrong. They became blindly obedient to Celestia, hating everything about humanity and did everything ordered by any pony. They didn't harm each other. In fact, they were nice. Just too nice. It almost reminded me of Starlight Glimmer's ponies before I freed them from her. But it was still better than the alternative. It was better than relying on human nature to cause them to always repeat the same mistakes over and over. We had plans to change them to be a little more normal. We had other priorities such as the conversion bureaus and the war. I admit there were complications, but they were peaceful, they were happy. They were programmed to be what you wanted them to be, said Mr. Doyle with a sigh. I know you weren't the brains behind the potion, that was Celestia, whom we'll get to in a minute, but you still hold some responsibility for that. You have no right to force us to become something we had never wanted to become, nor the right to limit what we could think, feel, or choose, even if it causes only pain and suffering. Have you seen a human mother find a new full son and learn he remembers nothing about her? Have you seen children forced to watch their parents be taken to horses that didn't like them anymore because they were, and I quote, sinful, polluting, and evil humans who love evil technology? Have you seen people kill themselves rather than lose their humanity? I was silent, but I had to admit there was some sympathy for them in my heart. Seeing such things might have been traumatizing, but it was all for the greater good, as Princess Celestia would say. Yet, were these humans so determined to stay who they were that they were willing to die than to be ponies? I just... I couldn't understand it. Why? Why stay a war and death-loving human rather than become a peaceful and harmonious pony? Humanity has always learned by failing and falling. We fall back one step, but we rise two more. It's the way we learn to sparkle. From what I can understand, your kind of almost came close to extinction as well, if not for a miracle. He leaned forward. Strange how there's no historical records of the time before that. It was a time of war and death, why would we focus on such a painful past? Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. But for the new foals, I will not lie and say that the potion didn't have some uses. According to our scientists, we can use it to help recreate lost limbs, cure diseases, and such. We've had mild success in attempting it, but we want a potion to turn the new foals back into humans again. Our scientists will work with yours to create this. Fine, but in return, you'll help us create one for those who want to stay ponies. I pointed out. There are a good many that chose to become one of us on their own free will. That's fine, but they must contain their memories, personalities, and emotions as they were before. Nothing different. He stated. And with that, one deal was done. Now, it was my turn. We want to repair our homes, we've lost so many cities and lands to the war that we want help rebuilding them. Medical aid and food is also a requirement, I stated. Understandable, but we also need it for the cities and homes you destroyed. Why not a compromise? Mr. Doyle said, writing something down. We'll help you restore your cities and homes, but in return, our refugees get to live in your nation. Some will live in human-only settlements, others will share with ponies. Think of it as a long-term plan to get our races to coexist with each other. Having human children grow up with the pony foals might help ease tension. I suppose there is benefit in that, I muttered. I knew that the power of friendship and magic would not be enough to heal the wounds between us. It will take generations for that to happen. If we were stuck on this planet, then perhaps we had to get ready to live with it. The discussion continued with other topics. What areas poets could travel to, and the same for humans in each other's land. Protection from radicals on both sides, economics, and what we were allowed to have military-wise. It was also decided that we would be watched over by the UN for 20 years before finally being allowed to govern ourselves again. I'd be the representative for my people, but I would have to listen to their rules for now. I didn't like it, but I had little choice in the matter. 
Bailed all the cards. Two of my friends were dead, as were two of the four Alacron princesses, while the other was in coma. I was the last princess remaining to hold any power. Apple Jack had joined a rebel group to continue the war with Rainbow Dash, neither of whom agreed with my surrender. Another two of my friends I had lost. Fluttershy was no longer my friend after her betrayal. The six of us who had defended a quest for years were broken. Our friendship was dead. I think that was what hurt me the most. That after everything we had done and faced, in a few short years we had lost it all because of war and hatred. I didn't know who to blame. Humanity? Us? Did it even matter anymore? If the humans wanted to, they could have killed me and took over my people completely. The fact that we were even having talks was a miracle. We talked for hours, making plans for the future. But now we came to the last and biggest one. Princess Celestia. We want her dead. I wasn't surprised by this. Princess Celestia was the most beloved pony in my nation, but was hated everywhere else in the world. She was the one who tried to give him a better future, and they spat in her face. And what was the price she had paid for all his hard work and sacrifice? Being trapped in a coma after spending the last of her magic trying to protect us in Canterlot. No, I demanded. She is our princess, she's... She's responsible for everything that happened, stated Doyle, slowly standing up. She has teleported your nation and your people to our world. Made the potion, started the bureau. When a majority of us refused, she declared war on us and said convert or be destroyed in some bullshit holier than thou speech. She made it clear she sees us as nothing but monsters. When the lives of over 3 billion people are on her hooves, as well as the loss of half our nations we once had. The princess is so hated she united us. She made us put our differences aside to take her out. Fifteen years ago, North and South Korea would have bombed each other to oblivion. Now they stand with each other, united nation once again, with the history of bloodshed and hatred behind them. I felt my throat get dry. To be honest, my brother, Princess Luna and Princess Celestia all thought it'd be an easy war due to their past grudges and prejudice against each other. They had fought over such things as race, nationality, religion, wealth, territory, political ideals and resources. They were divided, shattered, they were to be easy pickings. And yet, they came together in one single movement. They had one common enemy, they hid more than each other, and it was us. We had to face a united world, and we weren't prepared for that. Mr. Doyle leaned forward, and I trembled under his gaze. Princess Celestia's names were more hated than Stalin's, Hitler's, Pol Pot's, Moe's, Attila the Huns, Assad bin Laden's, and Satan's at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if she was Satan himself. She was a blight, not just on us, but you as well. You worship her blindly. Even now, when you've lost everything, you refuse to see the monster she really is. He slammed his hands down and I flinched, backing away. Under his gaze, I found nothing but hatred for the princess whom I learned to trust since I could walk. She manipulated everything and decided to make herself a god to rule over this world for you and your kind without even once asking if it was okay. Without even trying to work with us, negotiate, or even trying to help us. She decided to come and rule over us, making us in her own image, when the only image we deserve is the one God gave us. That's not true, she's... Did you know that it was her idea to make the new fall sterile? Asked Mr. Doyle, and my voice instantly caught my throat. I didn't know this. I checked my notes for any of this, but he tossed one down to me. I read it, my eyes widening as I saw the scientific data. A part of me wanted to cry out that it was a lie. But then I realized something. It's been 15 years, but there's no foals from the new foals. Now that they were ponies, they should have gone through their heat cycles and desires for mating, just like the rest of us. But did they? Had they really? Or was it... futile? This... I... I didn't. I said, slowly losing my control. The idea of making an entire race unable to bear foals was unthinkable in my mind. I... I can't have children. A bullet during the war saw an end to that. Oh, we found very interesting notes in Princess Celestia's study, as well as a few members of her inner circle who spilled their guts. Did you know it was her who suggested Cadence that she should use the Crystal Cannon to wipe out Rome and Mecca? She thought the destruction of our two most religious cities would leave us demoralized. In truth, she united the world's religions with that little stunt. 
especially after the failed invasion of Jerusalem. I never thought I would see the day where Christians, Hindus, and Muslims would work side by side in one united army of faith. And what did that lead do for you? Oh yeah, nuclear devastation of the Crystal Empire. How much do you think she used that as a rally cry for more ponies to join the army? I was starting to tremble. It couldn't really be true, could it? Princess Celestia and Cadence used the Crystal Cannon as revenge for my brother's death in New York City. Princess Celestia told me she was against using it, but it never sat right with me and how Cadence just used it like that, without any warning. My head started to mist up over the thoughts of my deceased full sitter again, and my niece who died in the nuclear aftermath. I had never seen anything so dangerous or terrifying as the nukes. There's not only a few hundred or so of the crystal ponies that survived the attack, and that was only because they had been far away from the site. It was then that we knew that the war was coming to an end. I have entire graveyards filled with dead mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, and more. I have every nation on earth willing to wipe you out, unless that bitch you call fair and glorious is delivered to us dead or alive. We don't care if you do it or you let us, but we want her head. He leaned forward and growled. She's not worth it, Princess Twilight. She's not. We will do it with or without your blessing. But if you don't support her decision, others will not be willing to even start letting you make amends, much less forgive you. I didn't know what to say. This was my mentor, my mother figure. The one who I respected most in the world. How could I let them kill her? But I could tell this was no idle threats. If I didn't condemn Celestia to death, but our hooves are theirs. If I didn't betray her by publicly approving of her death and declaring her a monster, I gulped, trying to stay strong. She's... Mr. Doyle sighed. Let me ask you one thing, Twilight Sparkle. Your overall goal was to make us ponies and build a new equestrian on Earth. One of peace and friendship, right? Yes? I said. Your old world, Princess Celestia and Luna, controlled the sun and moon. But they couldn't do it here, right? Yes, that's one of the first things we discovered. I said, a sinking feeling growing in my stomach. And back on your old world, there were other races. Griffins, zebras, dragons, magcores, yaks, changelings, diamond dogs, deer, and more, right? Yes, but what does that have to do with anything? I demanded. Mr. Dole shook his head and sighed. Who's been controlling the sun and moon in your old world since you've been here? No! Oh no! My eyes widened and fear began to grip me. My mouth dropped and I swore my heart stopped beating. Everything hit me at once. No, it couldn't be true. It just couldn't be. I thought about Zikora, Gilda, and all the others we had made friends with in the other nations. I thought about every race, from the good-hearted deer to the troubled changelings. I thought about who else can move the sun and moon, and there was none. For 15 years, the sun and moon never once moved in our old world. If they didn't move, that meant... The tears started falling slowly at first. Then they began to cascade like a waterfall. As I finally fell to the floor and wept. Dead. They were all dead. All the griffins, dragons, everyone. Dead. Either burned by the eternal sun, or frozen to death under the eternal moon. All of them were dead. Even if they had survived the sudden change in temperature, Without the proper conditions to grow food or find shelter from the extreme environment, they wouldn't have been able to survive for more than three years at best. Every race on the planet was dead, and we killed them. The moment we left to try to help humanity, they were all doomed. Spike, the only one who stood by me, even to this end, was now the last dragon. Maybe that his friend Gilda was gone so soon after they mended fences. Zakura, the one who had been there for me and the others. We never brought the Everfree Forest with us. And she knew. She had to have known. What was all this for then? Why did she do this? Why make us do this? And then, it all hit me. Everything came to me. The potion, a new world, no predator races. No even magic users. A land we could easily heal and grow with our own power. If all of humanity was converted, then the Earth would only have ponies. A world only of ponies. All these deaths, all for... Kill her. I whispered as the love of Celestia died in my heart. Mr. Doyle looked at me with pity as he got up and made his way for the door. Take her, kill her, and be done with it. Miss Sparkle, said Doyle as he got up inside. For what is worth, I am sorry. No, Mr. Doyle. I said as I turned around. 
I'm sorry for everything. I love to forever denounce my mentor that raised me, the monster that destroyed us, and everything we once stood for. For now though, we could only make amends with the inhabitants of this new world, and mourn the horrors that our mistakes enacted on those we left behind.